for today's headlines. United Nations seeks $6.5 million in aid after Philippine typhoon. Kuya Bong gives Pasay persons with disability fellow feeling. 19 million Filipinos eligible for COVID-19 booster dose. TESDA, one of most trusted agencies. Comelec checkpoints up soon. Philippine Airlines urges easing of arrival cap. ITCZ, Northeast Monsoon to bring rains. Lady Eagles plot return. Good morning, I am Venice Bautista and you are watching Tribune News on Q. Today is December 24, 2021 and here are the latest news of this Friday morning. The United Nations will kick off a campaign Friday to raise $6.5 million in aid for victims of Typhoon Odette, which ravaged the Philippines last week, the organization's in-country coordinator said. Gustavo Gonzalez told a virtual press conference Thursday that they'll be launching at the local level with the international community represented in Manila, a presentation of the humanitarian needs and priority plan. The financial ask is $6.5 million. The money will be targeted towards 530,000 people in the worst affected areas who are in dire need of health logistics, access to drinking water, and sanitation facilities. Typhoon Odette devastated parts of the Philippines one week ago, leaving at least 375 people dead, largely in the south and center of the island chain. There is momentum for full support, said Gonzalez, and now the challenge is that all of this announcement and solidarity is rapidly translated into concrete actions. It destroyed homes, uprooted trees, and knocked out power for many cities across the country. The office of Senator Christopher Bongo on December 19 assisted the differently able in Pasay City in his commitment to inclusive pandemic recovery. The team handed out meals and masks to 27 residents of Barangay 81. The Department of Social Welfare and Development gave additional financial assistance. As chair of the Senate Committee on Health and Demography, Go urged the beneficiaries to focus on their health and encourage them to visit any of the Malasakit centers in Metro Manila that will subsidize their hospital bills. Go said we already have 149 Malasakit centers throughout the Philippines that are ready to help. The Malasakit Center is a law that he promoted then, signed by President Duterte. The senator also asked eligible residents to participate in the national vaccination program. In October 23, the team sent similar assistance to 414 tricycle drivers in the city. The National Vaccination Operations Center, or NVOC, on Thursday said that around 19 million fully vaccinated adult individuals are eligible to get COVID-19 booster shots. NVOC's Dr. Kija Lorraine Rosario said during the lagging handa briefing, and those who were vaccinated around March to September, these are individuals qualified for booster dose. We have more or less 19 million. She noted that as of Thursday, December 23, the country has administered around 1.19 million booster doses. The numbers are expected to increase as the government shortened the interval for COVID-19 booster shots. On Tuesday, Department of Health announced the shortening of interval for COVID-19 booster. Adults may get a booster dose at least three months after they receive their second dose or at least two months after the primary single-dose vaccine is given. Before, the DOH was recommending booster shots to those who have completed their primary series of COVID-19 vaccines of Sinovac, Gamalea, Sputnik V, AstraZeneca, Pfizer, and Moderna, six months after they received their second dose and at least three months for those who have been vaccinated with single-dose Janssen. 
Rosario said the NVOC has set aside COVID-19 vaccines of all brands for booster vaccination, both homologous and heterologous combinations. Rosario noted that the government has to allocate more AstraZeneca, Moderna, and Pfizer vaccines as they can be used as heterologous boosters for recipients of Sinovac, Janssen, Gamalea, and the rest. Children aged 12, 12 years to 17 years should only be injected with Pfizer and Moderna vaccines. Turbine news on Hulu back after these reminders. Botomoto Halalan 2022, the Daily Tribune special coverage. Masaya, pagsama-sama! We're back on Tribune News on Q. An independent survey firm revealed that the Technical Education and Skills Development Authority, or TESDA, is one of the most trusted government agencies in its latest survey. Based on the 2021 Pahayag fourth quarter survey, TESDA ranked second among the most trusted government agencies with 46.1% trust ratings behind the Armed Forces of the Philippines with 52.6%. The agency was followed by the Philippine Air Force with 45.7% trust rating. TESDA also ranked second in approval ratings with 67.7%. The AFP ranked first with 69.7%, while the PAF ranked third with 64.5% approval ratings. The survey was conducted nationwide, covering 1,500 respondents during the period of 6 to 10th of December 2021. TESDA has been consistent in the top of the surveys, ranking first among government agencies in the 2021 first quarter survey with 62.1% approval rating and ranked second in trust ratings with 42.8%. For this year, TESDA has been continuously providing skills training programs and interventions to Filipinos, especially overseas Filipino workers and those members of the marginalized sector. As of December 2021, there are 26,989 OFW and their dependents enrolled in different TESDA courses, of which 25,579 have finished their respective trainings. Every city and municipality in the entire country will have at least one checkpoint supervised by the Commission on Elections and manned by members of the Philippine National Police or the Armed Forces of the Philippines or both. Additional checkpoints that the PNP and the AFP wish to establish must be arranged with the election officer in charge of a city or municipality, the COMELEC said in Resolution 10741. The locations of the Comelec checkpoints shall be posted at the offices of the PNP, AFP, and the election officer, with notifications to be sent to non-government organizations, civil society groups, and members of the media. Every checkpoint must be led by an officer of the PNP or AFP with at least the rank of lieutenant or the highest-ranked non-commissioned officer. The Comelec checkpoints will be established on January 9, the start of the gun ban period. In Resolution 10746, the Comelec ban on selling on and imbibing liquor will take effect the day before and during election day itself from May 8 to 9. Violators face imprisonment from one year to six years as well as disqualification from public office and revocation of the right to vote. The COMELEC, through Resolution 10742, also prohibited from March 25 to May 8, 2022, movements in the government bureaucracy, including the appointment or hiring of new employees, filling up of new positions, giving of salary increases, and transfer of civil service employees. 
In other news, officials of flag carrier Philippine Airlines, or PAL, are asking the government for a more flexible flight cap as many Filipinos working or living overseas are expected to fly home during the final days of December and at the start of January next year. This was relayed by Presidential Advisor for Entrepreneurship Joey Concepcion in his meeting with PAL Senior Vice President or Chief Strategy and Planning Officer Dexter Lee when the latter told Concepcion that arrival caps on arriving passengers might lead to stranded overseas Filipino workers and overwhelmed Philippine embassies and diplomatic posts abroad, especially in OFW-heavy countries such as those in the Middle East. PAL estimated that about 2,500 passengers, mostly of W, are expected and the number could rise if PAL is required to cancel or adjust flights. Government imposed a quota of only 4,000 arriving passengers per day at the Ninoy Aquino International Airport in response to fears of the spread of the Omicron variant and has led to forced cancellations of many inbound flights and consequently prevented OFW abroad from heading home this Christmas. Moreover, Pals Lee clarified the company is not asking to lift the arrival caps but instead is asking for some form of cooperation with the airlines to maximize the current cap, citing examples of excluding non-OFW from the cap since they booked their own hotel rooms anyway. The suggestion is in response to reports of a bottleneck resulting in a shortage of hotel rooms in the national capital region meant specifically for returning OFW. For our weather news, the Philippine Atmospheric, Geophysical, and Astronomical Services Administration, or PAGASA, on Friday said that the Intertropical Convergence Zone, or ITCZ, is currently affecting southeastern Mindanao, while northeast monsoon will bring rains in extreme northern Luzon. According to the Weather Bureau, Surigao del Norte, Surigao del Sur, Dinagat Islands and Davao Oriental will experience cloudy skies with scattered rain showers and thunderstorms brought by ITCZ. While Batanes and Babuyan Islands, Metro Manila, and the rest of the country will be partly cloudy to cloudy skies with isolated light rains. Temperature will range from 23.8 degrees Celsius to 29.2 degrees Celsius. In our sports news, University Athletic Association of the Philippines, or UAAP, women's volleyball champion Ateneo Lady Eagles are looking forward to doing face-to-face -face training sessions by next month following the relaxation of safety protocols. Last December 13, the Commission on Higher Education made the announcement that college and university teams have been given the go signal to hold physical practices. The last time the Lady Eagles played in the UAAP was last March 7, 2020, losing 17-25, 25-17, 17-25, 15 against arch rivals De La Salle Lady Spikers. The first order of business for the Ateneo is getting back their intensity in time for the upcoming season 84 in 2022. Lady Eagles head coach Oliver Almadro said that they are planning ahead of time and they are making sure it is in proper order with permission. They're doing it slowly but they have to be sure about every protocol for the safety of the players and for the safety of everybody. Metro Manila is currently under alert level 2 despite the looming threat of the Omicron variant of the virus. Other details of their upcoming training has yet to be determined, but for Almadro, he hopes that the league eases back into normalcy. And that wraps up the stories this morning. Before we go, we would like to thank the following. The SM Store, Department of Tourism, Araneta City, MG Motors, Hina Motors, Security Bank, and Overseas Community Affairs Council member Alan Lin of Republic of China for their continued support. Again, this is Venice Bautista, and you are watching Tribune News on Q. Stay safe, stay healthy, and stay at home. Good morning and Merry Christmas, mga katribu. Catch the latest news on our website, tribune.net.ph. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, Tribune Now.
Download the Daily Tribune app on Apple Store for iOS and Google Play for Android to get the latest and most comprehensive news online. Daily Tribune invites you to join its vibrant community, Katribu, to get updates on the hottest news on politics, business, sports, lifestyle, and entertainment. Emoticons of the Tribune mascot, Tarsito, are available on our community Viber.